In previous videos, we've looked at a number of different ways of generating renewable energy. But one of the challenges faced by engineers is how to store that energy. Now, in the video on solar thermal energy, we saw how mirrors were used to direct the sun's energy to a specific point, and that point was used to heat the fluid. Now, that heated fluid could be stored and could be used to provide energy on demand. So on the left hand side we see a schematic of how that was achieved. We see on the far left hand side a storage container which is holding the heated solution and this is the solution that's been heated by the sun. In the centre we see a basic heat exchanger and we see that heat exchanger providing heat to a binary fluid and that binary fluid is then connected to a turbine. So here's the important thing. If we're able to store that thermal energy, then we can use it when there's a high demand. Many of the sources of renewable energy that we've looked at previously didn't have that capacity, but here we're able to store that thermal energy. Now when there's a demand for that thermal energy, we can allow the solution to flow from storage through the heat exchanger, heating the working fluid, and producing electricity from our turbine and generator over on the right hand side. So it's important to point out that energy storage is an important part of an integrated approach to providing electricity. As we'll see later, demand for energy changes throughout the day and it also changes throughout the seasons. So we need a means of storing energy for use when demand is high. We saw a second video on the use of hydropower. And in hydropower, we're using potential energy stored in a fluid in order to produce electricity. So again, I've got a simple schematic diagram and we see at this moment in time, we have stored potential energy because we have fluid held at a given elevation. So this height here represents an elevation. Recall that potential energy is mass times gravity times height. So if we have a large body of water, we have a large amount of energy stored. Now, once again, when demand for energy is high, we can release that fluid and allow it to flow into a lower reservoir, like so. And in doing so, we can pass that fluid through a generator. So the fluid is going to flow through a generator. The generator is going to turn, preferably at 1550 RPM. And we're going to be able to supply electricity to the national grid. Now, the important thing here is what happens when demand is low. So let's assume that we've used all of the energy in our reserve and now the demand for electricity on the grid is low. So this time all of our fluid is in the lower reservoir and we need to pump it back up to the top reservoir. Now the reason this system works is because we can pump that fluid up to the top reservoir when demand on the national grid is low. Let's say for example it's the middle of the night, we have wind turbines connected to the grid Therefore, we can produce energy throughout the night, but we don't necessarily need to use that energy because demand's currently low. So instead, what we can do is we can switch the bias of our generator. So instead of generating, we're going to pump the fluid. Recall that a motor and a generator are the same machine, just working in the opposite way. So now instead, we have a motor. So we're using a motor rather than a generator, and that motor, is going to be connected to a pump. So what we're going to do this time is we're going to pump our fluid up through the pump and into the top reservoir. Now it's important to note that we are using electricity at this stage, but we're using electricity when it's freely available, when there's a low demand on the national grid. Therefore, we're able to pump our water from the bottom reservoir up into our top reservoir so that the potential energy can be stored for later use when demand is much higher. So just to summarise, we've looked at lots of different renewable energy sources. Most of those didn't have the capacity to store the energy they were producing. We looked at two in particular. We looked at a solar thermal energy system, which was used to heat a solution, and that solution could be stored for a number of hours. One of the problems with long-term storage in that model is that the heat will potentially be lost over a period of time. So we may get heat escaping. But as long as we can store that energy in the short term, we can wait until there's a high demand on the grid in order to use that energy. We looked at a second method, harnessing hydroelectric power, 
And in that example, we were able to pump water into a high reservoir when demand was low and release that water back to the lower reservoir to generate electricity when the demand for electricity on the grid was high.